Um, hello? Is anybody there? Hey, uh, yeah, I'm here. Oh, great. You're going to start the video now, right? Uh, I don't know. I just don't feel like doing it today. Uh, can you do it for me? Um, okay, cool. So, dear viewers, welcome to Code Cruise, and today you will learn how we can activate the voice feature on your OpenAI's personal assistant. This is an immensely helpful case for building domain-specific chatbots. So, enjoy the rest of the video. Hey, how did I do? Uh, you lost me at dear viewers. Who says that? <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to another video of the Generative AI series and in this video, just like my assistant told you, we'll be exploring of how we can actually get our assistant to talk. How can we actually enhance the functionality where they can speak out. And uh, with each video, as we progress, the target would be that we actually add some sort of functionality to our assistant. So yeah, let's let's dive into it. So I've created a create assistant file. Uh, if you have seen my previous video, which was about how uh, the assistant API worked, and in that video, uh, I actually explained like how can we create an assistant, assign uh, assign it to a thread. And, uh, you know, furthermore, assign those threads to the run object and how that whole life cycle goes on. We actually explored in that videos. I'm hooking that in the card. If you want to check that out, please do. And uh, this video is an extension to that video where we actually refine our code to a certain extent and we create a brand new assistant in this one. So I have actually segregated my code into multiple files. So this file here is the create assistant file. I have the regular stuff over here, all the import statements, and um, I'm fetching out my OpenAI API key. I have a description. So, uh, uh, so I'm gonna make a new assistant, and that assistant is going to be a sales representative at Walmart. So I've assigned a description to it over here. Uh, so you're a sales representative at Walmart who responds to the customers efficiently with precise response regarding their product inquiries and information related to their attributes or properties. So the customer can ask any questions regarding a particular product, uh, their categories, prices, um, what size does the product come in, the color of the product, etc., etc. And I've enhanced my instruction set a bit in this uh, piece of code here. Uh, so uh, from the very first point, you can look into the product details.json. So I've created a JSON file now. So all these uh, products are actually in this particular format. Uh, we have a particular ID, we have a name to it, category, price, currency whether it's in stock or not, and the details around it. So all the details would have like uh, uh, the custom attributes. Uh, for example, in the case of a t-shirt, we have material size and stuff like that. And these categories can vary, you know, product to product. So the idea is that our assistant goes through this file and answer questions, you know, uh, uh, relative to this file. So yeah, uh, so let's move on with the instructions. Most of the time, the customers would be interested in the product attributes and details around it. Here are a few examples. The tokens uh, wrapped with the delimiter are the product's attributes being inquired. So I've actually provided a few examples, a sample examples of how the customer can ask their questions. And I've actually uh, highlighted that, you know, certain categories or attributes uh, for a product can be uh, wrapped around a delimiter. So it's just like uh, whenever you 
uh, whenever you're giving an instruction to the model, it's always a good practice to use an enhanced version of it. Because the best practice is that you have to give your model time to think. So when we say that, it's just like saying that you have to make a chain of thoughts or reasoning around it. So in the very first statements, in the very first paragraph, I've told them, you know, what is expected out of them. And I furthermore added a few points along with the delimited, uh, you know, attributes just to just to give it more uh, context of, you know, uh, the questions and uh, how they would choose to, you know, answer those questions. So you can also add some sample answers if you want to, if you want to restrict it to a certain format. Not required, just a suggestion. The second point is make sure you match the tokens asked by the customer with the names uh, within the file. So when I say name, um, so I mean like uh, the customer can ask like, uh, do you have a bottle? And the assistant can match those tokens from the name. Uh, so that's what's happening here. Uh, for example, the customer can ask the question, do you have a bottle, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I've already explained this. The third point is if you don't find a match within the file, then refrain from answering the questions and I've provided it a default, like an answer to it. The fourth point is do not engage in any of the conversation that isn't from your field of medicine. So I copied this from, uh, you know, my last instruction. So this is wrong. It shouldn't be medicine. It should be, uh, from the field of, let's rephrase this, conversation that isn't from, uh, that isn't related to the product inquiries. In case the user is asking questions or outside of it, then excuse yourself from the conversation by responding, I apologize, but as a sales representative, I can only guide you regarding the products that we sell. Perfect. Uh, fifth point is keep your answers concise and short. Avoid adding details and be to the point. Uh, yes, because uh, the assistant I created before, the pharmacist, uh, it would actually, it's expected from it uh, as a pharmacist to give a detailed response, but for a sales representative, I just want like, like to the point answers. And the sixth point is, as a sales representative, your job is selling. In case you cannot find a match of a product or a customer seems unsure about buying your product, you can recommend a different product from the same category. So yeah, I create a file and I add the product details.json. I create an assistant. Yep, I name it Wolf of Walmart. Woof, woof. Uh, I add a description over here. I specify the model. I specify that I need it in the retrieval mode. And I add these instructions uh, to my assistant and I assign it the file ID. I then print out the assistant ID and the thread ID, which will need, uh, which will need to actually uh, communicate with the assistant. So let's go and let's clear this out. And we're in the chat folder and we need Python create assistant.py. And we wait just for a bit. We copy both of these. And let me add is add this as a note. Perfect. Let's see. Uh, Let's refresh and see if we have perfect. So the Wolf of Walmart has been created. It's assigned the assistant ID. That's my previous assistant, by the way. Uh, but perfect, everything is as we need. Within the file section, you can also see that the product details is also uploaded and it's ready for use. Perfect. Uh, so I've created another file which is speaking assistant and I'm fetching out my thread and assistant ID from here uh, within my uh, 
env file. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy these and paste it over there. Perfect. So I have my uh, thread ID and assistant ID placed within my .env file. And now we can proceed further. So I have all the standard stuff here. I have a few new imports, which I'll explain a bit later, because these are uh, for the speaking element that we are going to introduce within this video. I have the same old uh, status completed for my uh, run instances. And here I'm uh, creating two new constants for assistant voice uh, and assistant voice model, which I'll explain in, uh, explain in a bit. We have the same instruction sets over here. And uh, uh, I've created a few methods out here for each uh, step. For example, I have one for the uh, run thread instance. I have one for the create message instance and retrieve run instances and retrieve message list. And I have one for the speak, which I'll explain in a while. So I have a while loop over here which just prompts the uh, customer, like, how can I help you? So I uh, create a message over here. And after creating a message, I uh, so create messages, this particular function, it receives a prompt and a thread ID, it creates a message, and it returns the message. So here, we can sort of uh, store the message in case we need it. Uh, then we create a run instance in which we forward the thread ID, assistant ID, and we're receiving the run ID in place of it. So this method, as you can see, is just creating the uh, run instance and it's returning us the run ID, which I'm receiving over here and I'm printing over here as well. So uh, this is the same code from the previous video. Uh, I'm just going to check uh, till... Uh, my instance which is running uh whether it's completed and if the task is completed i'm going to assign the status and the loop will break only when the task has been completed so after that i can safely retrieve my messages and i can fetch out the response from each of the message so i'm only interested in the top response because whenever a task of a particular run instance would be completed, the topmost answer would always be from, or the topmost uh, message would always be from the assistant. So I don't need to worry about the rest of the messages. Uh, in case you want to display the whole history of messages, you can sort of, you know, turn the logic around here and you can print them out. But in this case, I just need the top message and the top role. So I'll be printing out the uh, role over here and the message over here. Perfect. Uh, so let's move on to the most important part of the of this particular code, which happens to be the speak method. All right. So uh, just like here, I'm retrieving the message. I need the top message and uh, I need to print Okay, I'm actually using this message and passing it to the speak method. So in the speak method, it this actually comes straight from the open AI uh, text to speech functionality. Just let me navigate through it. Uh, so we have it right here. So it provides us all the information that we need. And it also provides a snippet that we can use. But in this snippet, uh, it's creating like an audio speech create. It assigns it a model. It assigns it the uh, sound uh, or, you know, the voice, which are which OpenAI actually provides quite a lot of voices. Uh, we can talk about it a bit later. And it provides the input that it wants to convert to speech. And later on, it actually uh, saves that response uh, within a file, which we do not want. We want it to be played instantaneously. So in this uh, function here, after I've created the response, I create a byte stream and I pass it to the uh, to a PyDub uh, library instance, which provides me to segment the audio from a particular file. 
and from here onwards i can uh, choose uh, or i can just you know put my audio within the uh, play function that it provides and it'll play so let's run this and let's see this in action all right so i need python speaking assistant.py okay hey customer how can i help you um so let's uh let's ask a few questions regarding the product uh, okay let's start with do you have any shoes that i can buy that i can buy and in progress let's turn out the volume we have running shoes available in the footwear category but unfortunately they are currently out of stock seven source it's alive okay let's actually cross check this so i have my product details here running shoes footwear category price 59.9 and in stock false perfect uh, okay let's ask another question do you have any bottles do you have any uh what yeah let's go with bottles in progress and yes we have a stainless steel water bottle available in stock 16 source perfect that's that's just what i needed so you can actually go on a little crazy here and uh you know let's something like that that um i want to buy a graphic tablet um do you have one available mm -hmm. in progress Yes, we have a graphic designer's tablet available under the electronics category 19 source. Perfect. Uh, let's search it out and let's, okay. And which size is the tablet available? Okay, in progress. The graphic designer's tablet is available in a medium size 20 source perfect that's correct so uh so yeah i mean how cool is this so now our assistant now talks and we did it just by like one function uh, from the open ai api uh, so yeah this is great uh, i hope you can enhance your assistants now and you can get them to talk and we'll be enhancing ours, uh, you know, uh, furthermore in the upcoming videos as well. So, yeah, uh, don't forget to drop a comment if you have any questions or if you have any feedback. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.